Hello and welcome to Kicking Tires. My name is Jimmy. And I'm Justin. And today we got some exciting automotive news for you today. First, Acra. Acra debuted the TL Type S a little while back, but we got pricing information, which is, of course, very interesting. Um, so in Canada here, we're looking at $60,000 and in the US, $52,300. And you should be able to get it next month, I think it was, or mid next month. So that's interesting, actually, um, yeah. because we we're, we're talking about this before the show started, because pricing, of course, dictates a lot, right? When you're looking at purchasing a vehicle, pricing is a huge factor. And the pricing for the, the TLX is, it's perfect, you can almost say. It's pretty right. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a little bit more than the Korean premium brand and then a little bit cheaper than the German. So it's, it's right in that sweet spot that you would typically see Acura or Infiniti Lexus competing in. Yeah. yeah. So if we take a look at pricing, um, Cadillac, their CT5V is going to be cheaper. Um, the Lexus IS is going to be cheaper. The Genesis G70 is going to be a little bit cheaper as well. But you cannot get a German rival. So like the um, S4, the M Sport 340, yeah, um, or the C43. That's going to be all priced higher than the TLS, which mm -hmm. is basically where they're aiming for. Um, yeah. Because like their engine is very similar, right? It's like a three liter turbo with the V6 making about 350 plus horsepower. Like it's it's really just in line, which is very unique, and it actually looks pretty cool. Like I like the way it looks, and mm -hmm. Like I said, when I drove the regular TLX, a non-Type S with that standard two liter, like the chassis just wanted more power. It was fine. It was still fun, but it felt like it could use more. So mm -hmm. this is going to be interesting to see exactly what the Type S is able to bring. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we should, we should mention that this is a brand new engine for Honda, which is really rare considering <laughs> how long that J-Series has been around single overhead cam how, how how many years is that since your first uh j series the j series i think was like back in late 90s late 90s, 97 yeah. like the or 3.2 so. tl um that one yeah because yeah. the the tl the th second gen tl uses the j series first gen didn't yeah, yeah, I think it's a late 90s. I think it's late 90s. I could yeah, be so wrong. Though. This is an all new engine uh, dual overhead cam, which is revolutionary wow. to Honda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I don't know what that will do for fuel economy. I mean, ultimately, this is a Type S, so we're not too, too concerned about that. Um, but it is exciting to see the Type S name come back, mm -hmm. uh, not only on the TLX, but we are going to see other uh, type S models and um, yeah kind of interesting I noticed in the states they do the 20 inch wheels as well but they have a kind of a normal uh, all season option just the P7 Pirelli tire it's really average what BMW runs on some of their cars uh, and then they have an optional uh, lightweight wheel with the summer tires from Pirelli and it saves about 21 pounds total so six pounds a corner almost um of rotational mass which does count for something i'm guess but uh in canada that is our standard option so mm -hmm. summer tires are standard in canada i guess because i'm guessing that's because the all season they know it's not going to do well enough for canadian winters so we might as well give you a good summer tire and when it comes to winters we'll leave that up to you uh you can get that from acura obviously directly just get a set of tires uh of winters but um yeah I, I thought that was an interesting move on acura's part to just canadian spec is summer tire standard mm -hmm. uh so that's going to be pretty sporty uh the, the wheels look cool they, they say they're inspired by the nsx uh i can kind of see that 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 five spoke look the that's split five. really popular uh so many wheel companies doing this type of design uh, fco4 fco4 super <laughs> speed titan 7 bbs uh, fir cir 
everyone is doing this type of look. Yeah. Um, and it looks good. I think pretty aggressive 20 by nine uh, with a 255 tire. So is it, it 20 by nine square? 20 by nine square. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's pretty, pretty beefy for uh, an Acura. Yeah. Um, it fills in that car. It looks good. I think the, I the think overall looks, stance. I think it looks good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, uh, arriving mid June, so that's only two weeks from now. Actually, mid June is right around the corner. It's so been a it's way. been a while since uh, Acra has used a Type S name, right? Mm-hmm. Last time they used a Type S name was over a decade ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I mean that was. I mean, you can't really. Yes, it was a Type S, but it wasn't like that special. It didn't have yeah. like a bespoke engine or anything like that. This is, you know, really turning up Acra's performance division. Yeah. And Acra always had a problem with, is it a luxury brand or is it a performance brand, right? Because mm-hmm. while yes, you can be both, it's hard to split hairs because a good luxury vehicle generally rides really well, whereas a good performance vehicle generally doesn't. So like mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting to see how much they're pushing their performance division. And like you said, you know, they are pushing the Type S towards a new MDX as well. And I'm sure we're going to see an RDX version because, you know, it's inevitable. Yeah, and you know, the Type S, the third gen Type S especially was such a sought after car. Everyone uh at least that I went to school with was like, "Oh, that is a cool, you know, that was kind of when I graduated high school uh and that that car was very desirable and held its value for a very long time uh it was available i think you could get a six-speed version of it i had the brembo's four pot brembo's just like we're seeing on the tlx type s um again not never really meant to be a track car in any way but it, it is just like a hotter version and uh you know, with this TLX Type S, we're seeing adaptive dampers, which I don't think that car had. No. Um, active exhaust, which is pretty neat. You know, that's one of the tricks that we see from a lot of the European brands with their sport models is an active exhaust. Um, that's going to open a valve when you're above 4,000 RPM, even when you're in comfort mode. Because, you know, if you're driving just normally in comfort mode, you want to floor it. Suddenly you get an extra bit of volume there. And then in Sport Plus mode, it's just always on, um, always open valve. So pretty cool. I can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like too, because V6, it can go, it can go any number of ways. So yeah, and J series have always sounded good. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. There's, Honda knows. There's yeah. a couple of clips on YouTube already. Um, mm-hmm. I watched a video from Redline Reviews. Uh, where they had the, the Type S on a track and they did rev it up. It sounded pretty good. It's it's a smooth V6 sound, nice. uh, which, you know, these days you don't really hear that often anymore. But it was a smooth V6 with that extra, like, little growl rasp at the end. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's got a few more performance tweaks here and there. So the drivetrain is... A little bit different from your normal TLX. So it's a different transmission because this is more powerful. Uh, so we got d- internal components that are upgraded, strengthened um, to deal with that extra load. The super handling all wheel drive system, um, obviously reconfigured to work better for dynamic reasons. Up to 70% of the torque can be sent to the rear axle, which is pretty crazy for and Acura, I think. Uh, yeah. And I think that is going to give it an edge against uh, the IS and whatever Infinity may come up with down the road. But the IS, the big thing about the update with the IS was that it's dynamically more engaging than the outgoing one. Um, I didn't really find that to be the case, really. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is probably better, but it's still not, it's no Audi or BMW or even a C-Class, I think, yeah. in my opinion, at least. Um, it doesn't stack up to Germans, but maybe the TLX does. Um, a little bit stiffer in terms of the chassis. There's a bit of bracing that's uh, going on with the Type S as well. Uh, so 13% improvement in chassis rigidity. The only thing that I'm a little bit worried about with this car is even with the lightweight wheels is it's 4,200 pounds. Like that's a big, 
Yeah, it's still a heavy car. Right? <laughs> and I think that is that is going to be a limiting factor um, on the track. But I think again, this car is not meant to be a track weapon. So I think for a fun street car, it should be okay uh, being that heavy. But you know, to put it into perspective, that is where the full size, well, mid size to full size luxury stands were a few years ago. I mean, even like a uh, what a 2021 E63. I mean, how much does that weigh? Curb weight probably 4,600 pounds, so not that much more than this guy. Uh, and those are you know big daddy cars with with huge engines, 600 horsepower. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 4,200 surprisingly heavy i don't know where the weight is coming from necessarily i i think you know this is a lot heavier than an accord um and then yeah speaking of the accord i think this thing the tlx is size quite nice i would say for a sedan like it's it's got a really good back seat i think for this segment because the Genesis G70 doesn't have as good of a backseat. The no. IS does not have as good of a no. backseat. So I think that's going to also give it an edge over those guys. Now, the car that I'm thinking of as well is the people shopping for a Type S. You know, maybe this is just my growing up in the 2000s. Uh, but I think, you know, the Type S being kind of a status symbol is the Tesla Model 3, which is kind of the status symbol of status symbols that you could get under $60,000. And I think that dynamically is pretty fun to drive. You know, it's not going to have the same luxury as this kind of car, but it has inherent advantages being an electric car. It's going to be quiet, good back seat, lots of room, um, no tranny tunnel. just feels very open and that that car i think has taken a lot of that sport luxury sedan segment a lot of people argue is tesla really a luxury brand it's not but you're taking clients from traditional sport luxury buyers Mm -hmm. i think that's undeniable and the tlx is going to have to compete with that car as well because it's right up there in terms of price. It's sure it's got a little bit better features, got a 17 speaker sound system, which is way better than probably what you would find in Tesla. But um, it's you have to kind of cross shop, even though they're completely different cars. I think the three series has been cross shopped a lot with the Model 3. Um, again, everyone is gonna say the same thing. You're not gonna get that German, that, that really solid, build quality that you know when you slam a door on a three series or slam a trunk and all your panels lining up perfectly but you know say what you will about tesla they are making moves in this segment yeah yeah absolutely Mm. speaking of making moves in this segment bmw yeah very iconic car Uh, (laughs) everyone talks about it and you know Everyone talks about the grill, and we will talk about the grill some more (laughs) today. Um, I think the the Cabrio, or they call it convertible there. I don't know why. But the the Cabrio uh, version actually pulls off the grill pretty good. I don't know. Just from this picture, uh, I think it looks, it's definitely growing on me. I don't, it doesn't scream ugly. (laughs) <laughs> which when they first teased the M3, um, you know, with a lot of wheel gap in that green color, that grill did not work at all. But mm-hmm. I think this car is photographing really well. They Especially they had an angle where it's kind of a little bit higher up looking down at it. And it, it looks looks pretty good. And with the roof gone, it I think it, it just looks better. Uh, And there's a big change with the, this generation of four series versus the last one, which is we've gone to a soft top. Um, Mm -hmm. That, that is kind of huge because BMW really pushed the hard top convertible for since the E90 generation. Um, 
you know, kind of as a no compromise or less of a compromise compared to your traditional convertible design. Um, this soft top looks pretty slick, uh, I got to admit, and it's got some technology behind it. I call it panel, panel bow soft top, and it's a one piece soft top that looks like a one piece soft top. Like it's very clean in terms of the lines. Have you ever seen an E90 or an F, F30, F80 generation four series cab, you'll notice that the roof is kind of stuck on top. It looks, you know, a little bit jagged in some areas. The lines just aren't as clean, but that's just a limitation of having a, a three piece or two, th two or three piece folding design. Whereas this being a soft top, it's just one clean line. And yeah. that's going to give it some advantages in terms of not only uh, looking better, but I think uh, they, they're mentioning aerodynamics are better this way and uh, wind noise is better this way. So, and you get more interesting trunk space. move. Yeah, more trunk space because it, it folds, right? You can't yeah. fold metal like you can with <laughs> the <laughs> fabric. Um, it's paper honeycomb construction. I, I like the move that they've gone with this because I think there's no need to really like fake it you know you don't need if someone wants a hard top they want the hard top and i i know some people are like are weary of soft tops because they're like what if someone slashes it the soft top material on this is really quite stiff uh you're way more like if someone wants to break in they're smashing your window like a soft the roof is not your your primary sense of security <laughs> and i know i don't know why people mention that like i know it's like if you're buying a miata back in the day everyone's like you can just break into that i'm like you can just break into it even if it was a coupe yeah, you can break into any car <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyone with a crowbar can or brick anything can smash your, your window and open your door in no time uh way easier than they can get through a soft top i can tell you that to open a, open the roof, climb through the cables and mechanisms. To, I don't know why like people are very uh, afraid of a soft top. Um, as I far mean, as if, if Rolls Royce can do a soft top, DM4 yeah. can be a soft top. <laughs> and, and, and it looks it looks elegant. Like it's got it that does. that Landau look. Yeah. Um, you know, and the convertible is never going to be that track weapon spec. No. either but it's kind of interesting they they're doing a racetrack package with the with the m4 convertible which includes carbon ceramic brakes the lightweight uh wheels and the carbon bucket seats carbon interior trim and overall it reduces weight by about 25 kilograms i wouldn't go for that package um because two reasons um the carbon seats lose the uh the ventilation that the normal M sports seat has. And realistically, you don't want carbon ceramic brakes on a convertible. Like you're not you're not tracking this car. Um yeah, it doesn't make sense to have carbon ceramic brakes. The back seat is gonna get scuffed. If you ever have any customer uh not customers, friends <laughs> sitting in the back seat and they're they're getting in and out, you don't want that high gloss carbon fiber back. Mm -hmm. Like that to me, uh, and you know what? That's one of the things that uh, that's kind of separates the four series and the three series cabs before is that the back seat is actually usable on these convertibles. Mm -hmm. Arguably, I, I think it's usable. Like I can, I can fit behind myself in one of these cars, which I think is really good because when you yeah. compare cars like the, the IS two hundred and fifty convertible, Lexus SC, uh, and other force quote unquote two plus two convert 911. Um those are not really usable back seats. Those are more glorified parcel shelves that have seat belts to strap down your your bags. Um but the four series generally has uh, a, a fairly usable back seat. Right. Um what else is doing? Oh well this one has the MX drive. Right. I was just gonna say uh, this is uh that's, That's a huge, huge actually. part, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, the the current gen M3 and M4, you can get them with X Drive now, and the X Drive is it's so much more than just 
tacking on an all-wheel drive system. Mm. Like, if you want to have it in rear-wheel drive, you can. So you can do stupid oversteer stuff. But this is... It, it really makes the vehicle a well-rounded machine mm-hmm. that you can drive all year, but also launch it hard because, you know, traction is always going to be a limiting factor. That's why the, the, the C43 AMG can accelerate that quickly compared to a C63. You know, they, they're basically about the same up to, I think it was like 50 something kilometers per hour, sorry, 50 mm-hmm. something miles per hour just because of the traction limitation that the C63 mm-hmm. is only rear drive. And now having MX drive, you know, you, you completely mitigate all of that. Yeah, and the MX drive is not just, you know, it's, it's pretty advanced in terms of what it can do. It's got a sport mode. It's got torque vectoring. Um, it's got a drift mode as well, which is pretty neat. You know, so not only... Can you drift in two wheel drive mode? You can drift it in four wheel drive mode too. It's a different easier experience. <laughs> yeah, it's a different experience, but it is really cool. Um, you know, we've seen that before on other cars. You know, the Focus had it. I think Mercedes had it too on on their E class. Uh, some kind of drift mode on their on their formatic system. Uh, it makes sense because when you have that much control over where power is sent on your car. Drift mode is pretty easy to achieve. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I didn't see was the roof has a second color option, which is an anthracite silver option. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that looks like. Um, the black just works. I, I don't think know why you this would do that. But... One that's in the press photos is the that secondary is the option. Because it's supposed to be like a, a shimmery. Oh, okay. Rather than like a, a just a straight out black, so I think yeah, this it's kind is of like that. a gray. Okay, yeah, I think so. The Z4 has this color too. Yeah, and it is just uh, it's okay. not as radical as you might think it might be. Yeah, yeah. No, then it looks it looks great then. <laughs> in either in either color option, I think it will look great. Um, yeah, I, I do like this roof, and the rear window is flush in that fabric and it looks really slick mm-hmm. um glass window of course oh no no zipper window like a miata no, no zipper no <laughs> no plastic um uh, yeah a bit of chassis bracing i think as well with the convertible model uh just give it some of that rigidity back that you're losing from especially when you compare to the coupe or the sand with a carbon fiber roof mm-hmm. like the the convertible is going to feel like a wet noodle um <laughs> i don't think as bad as you know the e46 uh well the e46 the had you know subframe problems on top of that yeah and i think you know we've advanced with chassis technology that i think the uh convertible will be pretty decent uh yeah i mean this car's not going to be cheap it's going to be probably well over 100 grand realistically out the door yeah but it is a car that can do a lot of different things like take it's a real two plus two it's got usually these cars have a pretty usable trunk it's got all-wheel drive um yeah what's it 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 makes sense it does it does a lot of different things and it's convertible it can be a sports car it can be a lot of things to a lot of different people which it's not my choice um, you know, the sedan is probably my top pick and followed by the coupe, followed by the convertible mm-hmm. in last place. But the convertible, I I do see an appeal to it as being one thing to a lot of, or a lot of things to maybe a smaller group of people. Yeah. There's less compromise than there was before. That's for sure. Mm. I feel like, you know, with the cloth roof, the all-wheel drive, it's a better rounded vehicle for everyone that's just looking for, you know, a sports car. Cause like, if you wanted all wheel drive before you had to just go with the 440 or the 430, that mm. was, you know, the only option you had. Now you can get an M4. Yeah. You can get the real M with the wide fenders uh, with in, in convertible form, which is pretty yeah. sick with all wheel drive. Absolutely. Yeah. And a superior all wheel drive system too. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Speaking of superior, 
The Bentega S. No, 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 it's not. This Bentegas. is the Bentegas. <laughs> the most sporting of Bentegas. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, first things first, those wheels are straight off of Audi RS. Like, oh, I thought, I thought you were going to say a Civic. <laughs> that too. But that, that turbine kind of style wheel is, is very Audi. Um, and uh, yeah, a little bit like the uh, SI, the ninth gen SI actually. Yeah, the previous gen. <laughs> yeah, the ninth gen SI had this kind of wheel with the facelift model, like 2015 Civic SI. Uh, really, tell, tell me about this. Why do I care? <laughs> Why does anyone care? Because, um, this is, so this is the sport model. So of the Bentayga, the Bentayga has been quite a success for Bentley. They sold a lot of these cars. Um, for good reason. I mean, everyone wants an SUV. The interior is gorgeous. Um, there's no no way around it. The materials are amazing. Um, and it one is... sec, you, sorry, you said the interior is gorgeous. You said on record not long ago the GV80 had a better interior than this. In some ways, but <laughs> you gotta like at the de- when you look at the details, the Bentayga is is there. Uh, no, I think the exterior of the GV80 is superior. Oh, okay. Yeah. In some ways, you know, I'm sure uh, the, the the Genesis has its advantage, but that's a really nice interior. It is. Um, you know, that is top tier stuff, really special textures and materials. So, yeah, they wanted to give a sport model to this big SUV. Um, so splash some Alcantara contrast stitching, well, sportier contrast stitching, and, um, they've, they've stiffened the dampening a little bit with the air suspension. So 15% stiffer in the sport mode. So it's adjustable. So it's not really, I don't think you really notice day to day. I don't even know if mechanically there's any difference. It should just be software. <laughs> it's just like turning up a few clicks on the stiffness to give it that. Uh, sharper response, a little bit different in terms of steering feel. Um, bigger spoiler. I did notice that the, the rear spoiler on the hatch is is noticeably bigger. I do like it though. It, it looks good. Uh, it doesn't look tacky. And then just gloss black accents everywhere. Just, you know, that is the trend nowadays. Luckily, that is the exterior, not the interior. Um, you know, so not as bad as far as fingerprints go. Okay, you you keep saying sporty, but I mean, this thing weighs f- almost like fifty eight hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, it's like it, fifty seven small something. house. <laughs> it is definitely a small house in terms of weight, and it's not even that powerful. It's five hundred and fifty horsepower. So it's yeah. actually kind of crazy that five hundred and fifty horsepower these days are not too powerful. Yeah, because well, when you're talking six thousand pounds, yeah, uh, it's it's pretty normal. But it looks it looks good. Like the the original Bentayga was a little bit awkward. I think um, it looked kind of slim in some the, areas, and the then up, really the updates helped it a lot. Yeah, and you know they it's weird because the press release talks about uh, a dark tint lens on the headlight and taillight. I don't see it. I do see a little mascara around the lights, though, uh, like in a gloss black ring. But the headlight looks the same to me. The aside headlight looks from... just as clear. The rear, the rear is a little darker, possibly, or it could be just the outside. Yeah, I think it could just be lighting, even. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the wing, the wing is neat, and um, can can we yeah. just say how much better this tail is compared to the first gen? Because the first gen Bentayga was, I mean, it 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 had no character in it whatsoever. This looks like the current Conti. Like it looks really sharp. Yes, uh, the original one is kind of boxy, and uh, I don't know. It's like the the previous generation Flying Spur. Yeah, um, that's kind of where it drew inspiration from, and that one uh, visually, especially without the spoiler. It looked more like a hearse, like those when you would convert a Jaguar into the hearse, 
that's kind of what you got. Whereas this visually looks a lot uh, kind of more composed. <laughs> yeah. I, I like how, you know, it just ties in everything together. The taillights, the exhaust, like it all looks the part now. Yeah. Um, but there's a little bit of me that sees a Q7 in the back as well because of how the clamshell tailgate is compared yeah. to how it was before. But and and the, the D pillar. Um this car, I didn't know it was actually available in a seven seater configuration. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get it in a four, five, or seven seater configuration. Who's which, gonna be uh, able to sit in the back? I know because well, they probably compromise the second row at that point. Mm. But yeah, realistically, if you want, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Q7. The back seat, when you get a seven seater configuration, the back seat looks like a Q7. Oh, yeah. You want the luxury does. spec, you get the four seater. Yeah. The four seat, uh, the second row is a lot nicer. Yeah, and you get that um, center console. Yeah. Yeah, the four seat is probably the way to go. And People are like, why do you need such a big car to be a four seater? Like, it can it seats less than a Honda Fit. Let, let, let's be honest, <laughs> <laughs> You're, it's a Bentayga. It doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need to be practical. And even though it has less seat belts than a Honda Fit or a Toyota Yaris, it is still a super nice place to be, and that's what really matters. Yeah. Moving on to some sad news. Um, no pictures for this, but. <laughs> Mazda, uh, Mazda's killing off the CX-3 as well as the Mazda 6 in the US, but only the Mazda 6 in Canada. So, I mean, let's be honest. We're in the day and age right now where everyone is moving towards SUVs. No one really cares about uh, sedans. So the 6 kind of makes sense. It has to go. The small sedans are still like thriving. So the 3 is it's going to stick around for at least one more generation, but like Volkswagen killed off their golf. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's about time that a lot of manufacturers do kill off their vehicles and the CX three. Yeah. It's quite small. The CX 30 is of course can kind of replace that, but mm -hmm. the reasoning behind like why the CX three wasn't killed off in Canada compared to uh, the U S is because of sales. Sales numbers in Canada for the CX-3 isn't horrible. They sold, in 2020, 5,565 of them. Now, that's not a lot if you compare that to, like, you know, the HRV, CHR, maybe. for example, yeah. or HRV. It's It really isn't a lot. But Mazda is a boutique manufacturer. Their sales numbers are a lot less. Um, so, like... The CX-9, for example, the big three-row, they only sold 3,900 of those. So the CX-3 is actually decent. But in the U.S., the CX-3 sold 8,335 of them, uh, whereas the CX-9 sold 27,000. So you can kind of yeah. understand why the CX-3 had to die in the U.S. Yeah. It just wasn't the market for it. Um, statistically, in the U.S., you know, People are a little bigger. The CX-3 really doesn't fit bigger people. Mazas in general don't really fit bigger people other than the CX-9. Because the CX-9 is designed for the North American market, whereas mm -hmm. the rest of them are designed for the Asian market, really. I, for me, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't kill off the CX-3 here as well, just because of the age, mm. right? It, it is an older body style. Um, it, it certainly is, but... I think what's going to happen is they're going to kill it off next year. Yeah, I think they're going to keep it around some, for one more year first. Yeah, it has a little bit of potential left. It will still sell, and it's all paid off, all the tooling and whatnot. Yeah. Um, for me, it's just it is way too small. Like if I'm looking for something practical, like that back seat is pretty hopeless. Um, so I had a CX3 before, and. Honestly, like everyone's like, oh, it's so tiny. It's so small. Like it wasn't horrible. My wife, when she's driving, I can sit behind her because she's 5'2 and she moved the seat like literally all the way up. So like there are, yeah. there is some space in the back. Yeah. But as far when, as like the trunk and the yeah, trunk is, seat. trunk is tight. Trunk is definitely tight. I remember I mean, it being like my Fiesta. Like 
That's I mean, how small it felt to me. You're not wrong because the CX-3 is based on a Mazda 2. It's not based on a Mazda 3. So it's based on a subcompact to begin with. So yeah, it is small. It is tiny. A full-size stroller doesn't fit in the back of a CX-3. <laughs> That's yeah. why we got rid of but it. But it does fit in an HRV. It does fit in an HRV because the HRV's so, packaging is just amazing. It's just better. Um, it's a lot better. Yeah, and I think that is, you know, when the car is now older, it just doesn't have that same sex appeal that it used to. Mm-hmm. And for it to not have that sex appeal and not be as practical, I, I don't really see the point. But um, yeah, no, Mazda 6 as well. is Mazda 6 was never popular. No. <laughs> think, um, so to see it gone, but, um, not surprised. I'm not surprised, but the Mazda 6 really led the way in terms of Mazda's interior quality. Um, because the uh, introduction of the new 6 as well as the CX-9 is kind of when Mazda kind of changed a little bit from going from just a regular everyday brand to just kind of like the semi-luxury brand that it is today. Because if you step inside a 6, the signature 6, like everything feels great. Like there's suede on the uh, on the, the dash forgot what it's mm-hmm. called the dash um the like the climate control knobs like each click feels like solid there's heated and cooled seats and napa leather was really good it's a really really good sedan but because it's not designed for the north american market the six was narrower than like the accord the accord fits people a lot better if you're bigger like 200 like plus 200 pounds the Accord is a much better vehicle for you to sit in compared to the six, mm-hmm. even though like the six has a very good engine, makes 300 foot pounds of torque. Didn't matter. Did not matter. I, I, yeah. And it's, you know, they, they tried to bring it back with all wheel drive and the turbo. Um, but it's just not, I don't think an exciting car really sells in that segment. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're cross shopping the Camry and, you know, the Koreans always kill it in terms of uh, features. Yeah, yeah. Feature content. Um, and then, yeah, you can't match Honda or Toyota for resale value and probably even maintenance costs. I mean, as far as like, I remember the, the, the six would have, and even the CX three would have uh, infotainment issues as the three that probably when that when that first generation tablet style rolled out the six has been around for a while like it this, has. this body style has been around for a while so i can i you know it's totally totally makes it, sense it got an update but it was still the exact same as the previous other than like a lot of interior updates kind of mm-hmm. like the cx5 because the cx5 yes it got an update but it's really the same as previous. Yeah. Whereas the CX-5 looks visually quite different, like the, the, the current one and the 2013 one, the 6 didn't get quite a dramatic update. No. Um, and I, yeah, I did see a lot of people going from the old CX-5 to the new CX-5. Not so much with uh, the 6, I think. Yeah. Did you know the Mazda 6 comes in a wagon? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a, like that looks car amazing. is a European... <laughs> Well, and it used to come in the, that weird, I don't even know, Sportback. I guess nowadays we know it as a Sportback, but it's c- kind of a pioneer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, the pre... Before the, it was pre, cool. Two generations ago, the six... Like the Speed 6? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what yeah. you mean. Yeah, they had a hatchback version, which kind of kind of cool. Yeah. Um, ahead Jeff- of its time... <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe two ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of kind of cool, this is this is something that you know <laughs> I think you're very excited about. <laughs> um, so I know you're a big fan of Toyota. You own two Toyota products, um, a Rav Four as well as a Prius. And because you're such a Prius and lover, an FRS too. And a, oh, you have an FRS, right? I have an. FRS. That's a Scion, so that doesn't really count. Yeah. Um, but. I really want you to, you know, really understand <laughs> this from the Toyota's perspective because Toyota says that this is Highlander. It's becomes a work of art 
with the <laughs> new bronze edition for 2022. Now, oh, man. let me show you this work of art, okay? Because it's very, very important that I show you this work of art. So it's just like the regular Highlander, okay? But you get bronze wheels. It, it literally looks like someone plasti dipped it and gave you yeah. bronze wheels. And it gave you bronze interior accents. It looks like not only did someone plastic, them, someone took a 2014 Highlander, like the wheels off of a total 2014, <laughs> and painted and plastic dipped it bronze. Because guess what? It's the same wheel that they've been using for almost a decade. And that wheel is not even a real wheel. Like if you, I've seen one get into an accident and that chrome just splits off of the, the actual metal underneath it like it's a it's a hubcap in in depends on how you look at it but it's basically a hubcap and the bra <laughs> it's a work of art i just i love the quote that's right on the top There's it's a zero work creativity. of art with new bronze edition i think yeah toyota just does this kind of stuff where they probably paid for the mold of this wheel and they're like well what can we do with it we we ordered too many of these wheels yeah. and we ordered and the, them for the last generation car but we're still putting them on the new car and then th th there's a guy in the back right he yeah. would raise his hand he's like hey i found a bunch of bronze paint over here maybe we can use that yeah and there's and then, no bronze accents anywhere else really like on the outside at least no exterior there's there's none zero there's, it's <laughs> it's just the wheel <laughs> it's just the wheel on the outside it's just the wheel okay so let's go through the list of the actual differences with the bronze edition okay so the bronze edition you also get a hands-free power lift gate rain sensing wipers a digital rear view mirror a 1500 watt power outlet puddle lamps with the highlander logo uh, in dash you got the ambient lighting you also get a driver seat memory with 10 way power adjustment as well as an led power or sorry led daytime running light yeah. it builds so on the top XLE. of the xle grade which yeah. is like the second grade for the highlander uh, but it's only available for the hybrid oh, okay yeah, and you yeah. can only get you can get it in both the front or the all-wheel drive model and it's mm -hmm. a u.s exclusive Canada, oh, no. we're not getting this. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, Dustin. I so know disappointing. I know you really wanted this car, the but if you, want it, you have to get the bronze edition in the US and oh, import it. A gray market importer to get me that bronze you, edition. You know that you know in 20 years time you're gonna see this and bring a trailer, be like bronze edition bronze highlander edition. special Someone... with bronze wheels. And you know what's like crazy <laughs> about this too is that. Like this is something that a manufacturer does at the end of the model cycle. Like this is like when it's the last year. <laughs> year. It just this is a new car. Like by by all intents and purposes, like this is a pretty new model. And like this is something that you do. Like this is your last hurrah. Like I just want to throw some value package onto this car. I want to throw in the power trunk for people buying the XLE grade. And just <laughs> the seat, the seat accent is actually kind of nice. I, I like the insert of the seat accent. Yeah. But it, it just reminds me of like toilet paper, like the quilted toilet oh, paper. Oh no. <laughs> the skid mark. <laughs> oh no. Now you can't unsee it. Oh no. Now you but can't no, unsee it. No, the wheels are actually skid mark brown. Like they're not even bronze. See? Let's be honest. Yeah. This is a, uh, I mean, this is a special edition, kind of like special edition products that you have from Toyota's before. You know, when you buy a Corolla, there was a CE, there was an LE, but you're like, I really don't need the LE stuff. I'll get the special had, edition that was right in the middle. I have, no. So, oh, good point. I had the 07 special edition, which gave the Corolla special edition, which is the last year of that generation Corolla. It started in 03 and I had the 07. Now the 07, what you got with that is alloy wheels, the ugliest alloy wheels ever fitted to a car. 15 inch alloys that the spokes stuck out more than the, the rim because it's only a six inch wheel or something like that. It had a sunroof, it had power windows, power door locks, had aircon as standard, and it had a different grill, which was also uglier because I had an 03 and then I had an 07. So the 03, <laughs> had hubcaps which looked better 
than the alloy wheels that they put on the 07 special edition. So it's not like Toyota hasn't done this before, but they usually do it when the car is getting a little bit depressing and they need to spice things up a little bit or just add a bit of value to it that's not selling as well as they thought it could. So they, they do this kind of stuff. The floor mats are kind of nice too. The floor mats aren't bad. I, actually, like the bronze on the inside, I don't mind as much as that, the, wheels the wheels on the outside. But like, I like this. I like the, the sills, like that Highlander sill on the side. That looks good to me. Yeah. Like, I don't the problem is the bronze color. Like it, it just looks like cheap plastic dip, <laughs> like winter wheels. Yeah. <laughs> so they yeah. they have two exterior colors um a cement as well as the wind chill pearl <laughs> i don't know what color that is i'm thinking it's white i'm thinking it's just blizzard it's just a, a they went to the thesaurus and they're like <laughs> how do we change blizzard into a different word let, let me take a look toyota wind chill pearl is a white yeah. it's white it's the same white that they have on the the camrys so you yeah. can get a white or gray all right so i don't mind the gray the gray is actually kind of like in right now you can yeah. get it on like audi Toyota gray but on i think you know if if this was like a value option, which I think it kind of is. It is. You know, I don't mind this. I just throw away those wheels, right? No, you know what you do is you actually buy some cans of Plasti Dip and just <laughs> paint them black. Like, I, Okay, I'll paint that black for my winters. Then I'll yeah. go to you and be like, hey, Justin, I need some like wheels. 20s. <laughs> Get me some 20s, make it look good. Yeah. Then it's a perfectly good car. Yeah right like that yeah that's what it comes down to it looks really good like overall like from the front angle it looks good if you don't see the the bronze wheels yeah. it looks pretty good no i i don't mind the cement and i don't mind the white that you can get mm -hmm. it's a it's a value vehicle you get the six no you get seven seats in here uh because there's captain seats in the rear you get special type of materials inside the bronze accents there's nothing wrong with it other than the stupid quote that they have on top, calling it a work of art. <laughs> work of art. <laughs> and the, you know that Top Gear episode when they drive their cars into a, oh. like an art gallery? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Toyota this... brings, like, oh, uh, which car are you guys bringing? The uh, LFA or the uh, maybe the LC or the, the GR Supra? No, we, no, we, no, no. We, we got this. We got the <laughs> Highlander Bronze, bronze Edition. edition. Oh, it's rough. I, I, I can't. I, it's fine. You know, I want if you to don't know who wrote that caption, <laughs> um, Arthur, 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 Arthur. Uh, this is uh, Nikki. Nikki. <laughs> no, well, we got to talk to Nikki contact. about that. Yeah. <laughs> Which art school did you graduate from? Let, let's move on from that and let's talk about the Infinity QX55. Because if we're talking about a work of art, this is a work of art. This is yeah. the brand new QX55. It's a coupe SUV from Infinity. So what they did is they took the QX50, which is just their standard SUV. They chopped off the rear end, made it into a coupe, and it looks fantastic. Yep. Definitely one of the top SUV coupe transformations. Like, And, you know, Infinity is not new to this, right? The FX... FX from back in the mid 2000s that was kind of a styling exercise as well yeah. where that, you can say that was like the first coupe SUV yeah and this they're killing it with this like this looks like what the Jaguar I-Pace kind of should look more like mm. um it I see some of the I-Pace in the lines but it just it's so well executed the taillights are gorgeous and it's it's amazing because the QX50 I think is one of the the most bland and like, bland and boring. Yeah, it really one is. of the most like yeah. It's just not a good looking SUV and just looks cheap, especially if you get the base model with like 18 inch wheels or something like that. And this coupe like it just justifies that whole trend of of SUV coupes. Like you still have a usable trunk, obviously oh, yeah. not as 
big as the the, the normal cubic 50 but it's still usable it's it's huge yeah. actually a 26.9 cubic feet it's bigger than the x4 bigger than the glc it's bigger than any other coupe suvs in this line yeah it's and fully you know, usable talking about the x4 and the glc this one looks at least looks better than the car it's based on yeah whereas the x4 the x3 is a better looking car in my yeah. opinion and i think overall so there's no reason for the X4 to exist. And then same with the uh, GLC. The, the normal GLC looks better than the GLC Coupe. This one is just absolutely gorgeous. And it's kind of like, I like the Cayenne Coupe. And this is kind of like that. Like the Cayenne Coupe, that again, that's your luxury, sporty, you know, you're not buying that car to be the most practical. No. And... I think this this makes sense. Now they haven't changed anything really on the inside, so no. Uh, it is kind of a bit of carry. Well, all carried over from the QX50, which is a lot of it is carried over from the Q50, which is almost a decade old now. It's already old, yeah. Yeah. So the infotainment they did update it with wireless Apple CarPlay, which is nice. Um, but unfortunately, you don't have a Qi wireless charger in here. So like. If you're going out and you want to plug in your phone or to charge your phone, you have to plug it in. But they give you a wireless CarPlay. Like it, they give you the CarPlay, but they should have given you the wireless charger as well. Mm -hmm. um, something else you lose out on on the QX55 comparing the QX50 is you don't get a panoramic sunroof anymore. Um, so you just get a standard size sunroof. It's there because, like, if it had the panoramic sunroof, it would have cut in a lot of headroom for the rear passengers and of course they didn't want to do that but like overall i didn't mind the qx55 i thought you know it's it's funky it's cool like it's not as much of a compromise as some other coupe suvs are which kind of makes me think this is not like a coupe suv it's a sedan it's a higher riding sedan Oh, like a, a right? Subaru uh, Outback. <laughs> Your favorite, <laughs> the Outback sedan. Yeah. No, yeah. This this is you awesome. Know, yeah. You, it kind of has that kind of kind of you know roof Thing? line to it. It's not super coopy because it yeah. doesn't like squish that rear end completely down. But it's it is still higher. Shooting riding. brake. It's shooting brake, but higher. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Definitely and don't I mind it. Pricing Being... is a little high. Yeah, um, yeah, a little bit. A little high, but I think for this market, if you're comparing this to like the X4 and the GLC, it's a lot less it's than that. a lot cheaper, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can get into one for, at 52,000 Canadian, um, and the top model is 51,000. And no, you, you can't get there. anything close between the X4 and the GLC. Yeah, um, and I think... This being a styling exercise, you don't need to compare it with. That's that's the beauty of it, right? Is that you're not comparing it with the RDX, you're not comparing it with uh, the NX or fourth, you know, whatever NX uh, that we're getting next. But um, yeah, because this you're mainly buying this for the look, and that kind of makes life easier for this car. Yeah. I think uh, it's it doesn't need to even be a volume seller because this is just our art experiment and this is uh, Infinity showing off a little bit with their design, which has been pretty good overall. Like uh, the Q50, as old as that car is, it still looks good. Still looks good to this day. Yeah. It, it it really does. You know what actually looks better? The Q60, the coupe. It's still debatable. <laughs> so the Q60 to me. Um, especially the red sport in the red color that it comes in, it looks like a concept car to me. Yes, it just doesn't have. It has kind of random lines like that, the rear window swoosh, and uh, the tail lights. The way it resolves, I don't like it quite as mm. much as I like on this QX55. Yeah. Um, and, or even the Q50 sedan, but. I know what you mean. Like they, they are a very styling uh, emphasis company, mm -hmm. which um, and the taillights look kind of like what's on the M4 that we talked about earlier. Kind of reminds me of those uh, the OLED lights. The OLED, but, yeah. But but it's like the newer style 
the way that curves. Yeah. It kind of looks like the new four series. Um, but yeah, all of these coupe SUVs, this is uh, pretty compelling, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Decent price. Decent price. It, it's not bad. I mean, if you're looking for a coupe SUV, definitely take a look. It's not going to be the best driving one. Um, you know, standard kind of front wheel drive, all wheel drive layout, two liter turbo, 268 horse. It's not designed for fun. Oh, it's, it's front wheel drive base? Yeah, it's the same like front wheel drive based all wheel drive system that the uh, the QX50 is. Oh, okay. I thought it would be like the Q50. I did see the engine is is positioned sideways, but yeah, uh, I thought it would be more like the Q50. No, floored in with full lock in is still just understeers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I mean, you're not driving this to no it's not uh, designed for that yeah not at all just, it's it's all about looking looking good while you're doing it yeah. i i love this shot the most like it just it, yeah it makes it look really nice the the lines on the side and just yeah. the the bulges on the hood it, it's a really attractive vehicle like my wife she, when she saw this when we picked it up um uh, she actually loved it like she then she went inside and she's like, Oh, I, I don't really like the infotainment and some other stuff. But she yeah. can see us having a vehicle like this just because of how attractive it is on the outside. Yeah, and still usable at the yeah. end of the day. It's still it's still usable as a small family car. Yep. Um I was able to put kids in here. Well, one kid. Kid <laughs> seats. Your your kid is very small though. <laughs> <laughs> But his child seat is very big. <laughs> True. And a stroller. So exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, this angle really shows off that coop coop nature. Like it it looks sporty. Yeah. Um yeah. emphasis on looking sporty, not actually being sporty. <laughs> yeah. Which is honestly what a lot of people want, right? Like people don't yeah. want that original X6 that looks like a coupe, rode like crap, and just not that usable, terrible headroom in the back. Yeah. Um, you know, that first Gen X6, and then they kind of dialed it down. It's more muted now um, with the way it's it's styled and everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think the Highlander work of art should belong on the QX55 press release. Yeah. The QX55 is, is definitely a work of art, of automotive art. Not the not Highlander. So yeah <laughs> the bronze edition is really the highlight of this week and uh, should be the cover photo of this week. no i'm not <laughs> using i'm not using the highlighter as a cover photo no way <laughs> it's a work of art i don't care I, I I watch it, like, you think you know more about cars than toyota <laughs> <laughs> yeah one of the largest manufacturers sells the most exactly. cars yeah exactly <laughs> Oh, uh, I think I think that's really it for this week. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we had a lot of fun this week with the uh, with the vehicles that we had. But uh, yeah. we'll see you again next mix. week, and we'll go over more car news then. Take care, everyone. Thank you.